So hello everyone, I'm Zohar Kaufman and together with me today is Alexei Kravtsov. A few words about myself. I was the co-founder of Citera Networks that is active in the cloud storage and enterprise file services areas. Later on, I've co-founded PortShift together with Rani Lani, a startup focused on Kubernetes security that was acquired a year ago by Cisco. Uh, Alexei, would you like to also to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Alexei Kravtsov. I uh, worked at a checkpoint in the, the old-fashioned security uh, products before the cloud uh, hit up, uh, leading the data path acceleration team. Then uh, I joined PortShift uh, in its uh, it beginning uh, to move to the cloud security products. And uh, in the last year, we uh, were acquired by Cisco, and so now leading the Kubernetes controller security team. Thank you, Alexei. So in Cisco, we joined an effort around API security in Kubernetes and stumbled upon a problem space that we will present today. This work was inspired by Peter Bosch and Alessandro Dominuco, so thank you for that. And now uh, we look at the, the problem space. So cloud services are becoming more and more popular. Many of them are using open API specifications to define the standard language agnostic interface, which allows both humans and computers to discover and understand the capabilities of a service without access to source code or documentation. Not all applications have their open API specifications available. They can be legacy ones or external applications. And we would like uh, to get the open API specs uh, of an application without code instrumentation or modifying existing workloads. We would also like to detect drifts between implementation and specifications, applications that still use deprecated APIs, also called zombie APIs, and undocumented ones, also called shadow APIs. We looked for cloud native open source that will allow us to do all this, but didn't find a solution that will answer all our needs. Open API tools and uh, api.specificationtoolbox.com uh, provide a good list of open API tools and related to the list of companies. There are also good solutions from Optic, Swagger Hub, API Shark, and IM Vision, but none of them answered all our needs. So we did, decided to produce a new open source called API Clarity. No code changes are needed for, for, uh, for any of your apps. When deployed in Kubernetes cluster, it, it observes all the API traffic and reconstructs all the relevant API specs. The user can then review and the reconstructed spec and declare them as a baseline or alternatively provide official specifications to be compared to the reconstructed ones. Afterwards, we can note all the API events that are different from the approved spec and highlight the zombie and shadow APIs. We also provide a UI dashboard where we can audit and monitor the API findings. As the first integration, we achieved this by utilizing a service mesh running inside the cluster. And voice sidecar proxies help us observe all the API traffic. And as a result, we can reconstruct specs, highlight API differences and other abnormalities, while the user can review the specs and make changes as needed. We detect spec parameters, whether in the path, query params, headers, or cookies. We understand object references that might be included in the spec. We support file transfer API. And for security definitions, we digest basic auth and auth2. So now for our demo uh, and setup. So we have a Kubernetes cluster with Istio service mesh already installed. API Clarity, it was also pre-installed. And we run there the SOC shop uh, demo application in order for you to see API traffic and visualize everything that is going on. So let's go now uh, to Alexei for the demo. Thank you, Zor. So let me show you what we did uh, in API Clarity. So uh, this is the GitHub page of the open source. Uh, actually, it consists of uh, three different repositories. It's the main repository of API Clarity and the speculator, which is our spec reconstruction engine. And we did an integration with the Istio, uh, with the Envoy. So we have the WASM WebAssembly filters repo for you to hook it up uh, and get traffic from Istio. So let's get back to the main repo. So uh, in order to get, uh, get you started with the reconstructing open API specification from live traffic 
in your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, all you need to do is uh, to set up and run the installation YAML, which is right here. You can uh, just deploy the, the YAML with the binaries and the images that we prepared for you. And in order to get the traffic and uh, to monitor the traffic from the selected namespaces, you just need to init the WebAssembly submodule and uh, just to run the deployment script with the namespaces that you choose to see traffic from. And uh, from that point, uh, all, you, all you can do is to port forward uh, to your cluster, to our service, and uh, you will see something like this. So that's the main dashboard of API Clarity, which shows you uh, the trends of new APIs, of existing APIs, and if there were any diffs uh, against the provided or the reconstructed spec. Uh, here you can see the most used APIs and also if you set up and uh, approved any specs, uh, it will be shown uh, right here. I'm using the Weave Sock Shop uh, demo application in order to generate some traffic and see how uh, it is affected in API clarity. So uh, let's just generate some traffic registering to, to the shop and let's buy a few socks and uh, then see all the microservices that are involved uh, in the tr transactions and all their uh, APIs. Okay, so let's buy some additional socks. Maybe try to remove something from the cart. I think this is mandatory to complete the transaction here. Fill some credit card information and complete this transaction. Great, so I, I think that we generated enough traffic to see it immediately. So I think that should be a spike in the last five minutes of the traffic. Yeah, that's what we did just now. So if we go to the API event screen, uh, we can see all the traffic that uh, was generated right now in the SockShop application. Uh, we can see the time it would happen, the HTTP methods and the paths. Also, if there was were uh, any errors uh, that occurred, uh, we can see the source and the destination of the pods that communicated. Uh, and we can also see if there were any diffs uh, against the spec. Uh, we'll get to, to the specs in one second. Uh, and we also see here the host that was invoked and what is the microservice that uh, we invoked. And also here we have a type, whether it's internal or external communication. Uh, I will show you in one second also how uh, external communication uh, looks like. I mean, we monitor not only the traffic, uh, the east-west traffic in your cluster, but also uh, the, the traffic that goes to external destinations. Uh, we have here also filters that you can easily filter uh, this application. And uh, we also detect uh, non-API events, meaning that if your web application generated some, there were some uh, traffic like images, and that's not necessarily uh, interesting for you uh, for your API traffic. So you can uh, see also and this traffic, so let's just see if there are some images that occurred. Okay, great, so that's some images from the website. If I turn this off, uh, all these images disappear uh, and then we can focus only on APIs. Uh, so we have a bunch of uh, filters here that you can just uh, concatenate and search for. So let's just uh, search for the cards service, for example, and only ones that contains uh, items, let's say. So you can see that these filters are added and you can uh, see the same thing in the, in the trends, in the graph view. You can delete all these filters and go back to, to the normal view. Uh, and you can also drill down into the event to see all the uh, to see all the details. And we currently don't have a provided or reconstructed spec yet. I will ju just show you in a minute how it is uh, added and uh, and created. 
but we can go to uh, the API inventory uh, entry that is prepared for the cards, uh, for example, API here. Uh, in the inventory, we automatically detect and create the inventory from uh, the events. So we see that these are the microservices that uh, were invoked. Uh, the same we have for external HTTP, and I will show you also how this is reflected in the events. So basically what we have here uh, is the API inventory where you can uh, set a provided uh, spec for each API, or you can see the reconstruct spec uh, that we uh, learn and reconstruct from the live events that we just created in the SOCshop uh, application. So if we go to some uh, API and check what was reconstructed, we go to the review phase where, uh, where you can uh, a check and uh, set the, the values that you want for the parameters. So here we are reviewing the spec for the cards microservice. And uh, as you can see here, we detected it just as parameter because we see that uh, this value changes and fits to a parameter structure. You can also see from which entries uh, this was created. So we detected this one, for example, this UUID as a parameter. So you can also unmerge any entry from here if we got this by mistake. And oh, uh, of course, you can give it a human name as, uh, for example, user ID. And you can see that it is immediately changed. Uh, let's say ch changes as well. Let's say that's a card ID. That's a user ID. That's probably an item ID. So once everything is in place, so you, you can again review anything that was created, any event that created uh, this suggestion. And once you good with the review, uh, you can approve the reconstructed spec. It will be created from five entries, <clears throat> and in a second, you will just uh, see the Open API specification that is automatically generated with your input. Uh, you can see it here. You get uh, the hit counts for it. You can also uh, see this in the, the Swagger editor. Uh, we we generate a, an HTML page uh, with uh, the Swagger uh, information, so you can view it conveniently. Uh, here. So uh, it is important to say that no information leaves your cluster. Everything is done uh, locally using port forward into the cluster, and this one generated within the microservices and can be accessed only within the cluster. Uh, so here you can see that uh, we reconstructed all the parameters and fields. Uh, we also have the ability to reconstruct security definition and objects, and uh, we, we can understand uh, which object uh, were used and place them correctly. Uh, we also uh, reconstruct uh, file uploads and, and, and the type of fields, and we have uh, more and more uh, properties that, that we put into the spec. Uh, yeah, so that's how a reconstructed spec will look like. So if I go back to the API inventory again, I can see that uh, the cards microservice has uh, now a reconstructed spec. We also have uh, the ability to uh, upload specs. So here you can just uh, upload any specification. You can just drag and drop or browse it. And uh, then you can also get uh, diffs uh, of the live traffic against the specs. So let's just try to uh, put to, to review some uh, additional specs. Here it was a really simple API. Let's prove it. Basically, in, in several seconds, I can create uh, the API specification for all uh, the microservices in the SOC shop uh, application. Let's just keep it as param one for now. So uh, as I get more and more specs in place, uh, if I now generate any traffic again in the SOC shop uh, demo application, I should see, uh, probably should see any diffs uh, with the spec. So that that can help us to detect zombie APIs, 
as Zor mentioned, and also shadow APIs, which are not documented at all in the specification. Um, and just let me show you in a second how it looks in the system. So again, let's just finalize the purchase to invoke as many APIs as possible here in the demo application. Sorry, I'm not registered. I just create some user here, complete uh, the purchase, get as, as many as uh, traffic as we can, to hit as many APIs as we can. Okay, so I think it's good enough. So if I go back to the API clarity, again, to the dashboard, I see that there are uh, a bunch of uh, traffic that was created just now. And uh, as you see, there are different types of traffic now. There are new APIs that happened that I didn't do previously. And also I get uh, diffs, which I can just click here and go right to it. So here, if I would have a provided spec, it will show me, but here we see a reconstructed spec diff. Uh, it means that, uh, for example, here we see some tracing headers of Envoy that were in the spec, uh, and which are not, not present in the current calls. So this actually, uh, can we, we can ignore these headers as well, so they will not appear in the learning mode. Uh, so let's just see maybe several more uh, examples to it. So now we have a diff against the provided spec, for example. Uh, so yeah, you, you can see that uh, new APIs and more information we detected that actually is not in the in the provided uh, specification. Um, so that's how you can detect shadow and zombie APIs. And in the near future, we will, uh, in, in the upcoming days, actually, we will show you uh, also in the UI the different type of diffs, like I said, zombie and shadow API. So that should be uh, real soon. So I think that's uh, pretty much wraps uh, the current capabilities of API Clarity. So you are welcome to, uh, to clone it, fork it, try it out yourself. You can also build it with any demo application, even if you don't have a Kubernetes cluster or is you running to get the look and feel of it. Um, so that's it. So back to you, Zor. Thank you, Alexei, for this great live demo. And now we, we will talk a little bit about a, a few other comments that we have in roadmap session. So why did we bother to do all this? A new report for, from IBM Security X-Force has found two thirds of cloud breaches can be traced to misconfigured APIs. Yes, two thirds. From that report, uh, let me quote, APIs are fast becoming the technical basis for both B2B and B2C business models. As such, when APIs are developed and, de and deployed, there is a really no way to estimate all the, possi the possible places the APIs are going to get used API are silently but rapidly becoming one of the most critical pieces of software supply chain. Organizations are now one vulnerable API call away from a potential major breach. So this was IBM and it should come as no surprise that Gartner predicts that within the next few years, API abuse will move from an infrequent, and, uh, to, uh, infrequent uh, happening to the most frequent attack vector resulting in data breaches for enterprises and web applications. So we started all this in order to be able to use it in our secure CN offering for Kubernetes security we, were, we are working on. Knowing the API spec is the first step to identify your API risks. Given the specs, one can also run fuzzing tests and automatically generate the client and server codes. The spec can be also be served as a good documentation for future usage. The most important roadmap items we have is uh, we, are, we already support today Open API Spec version 2. We can broaden the scope to support also Open API Spec version 3, GraphQL, and gRPC. Currently, we are integrated in, with Istio and Envoy. We should add more integration points like browsers, Postman, API gateways, and others. I want to call out the community to cooperate with us. 42 Crunch, that are also behind API security.io and API metrics that are doing intelligent API monitoring already accepted this challenge and will join us in maintaining API clarity. We will be happy to see more of you collaborating with us on GitHub. 
thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of DevNet Create.